In busy urban areas, it's quite common for someone to park so close that it makes it hard for you to leave. So in this video, I'm gonna help you learn how to get out of tight parking spaces, both on the road and in car parks. Let's start with the road. In situations like this, simply steer all the way towards the middle of the road and go forwards as far as you can. Then steer all the way the other way and go backwards as far as you can. And then you keep repeating this process until there is enough space for you to get out. This is what it looks like when you get close to the car in front of you. At the moment I can see all of the bumper and the tires, but as I get closer the tires go out of view and then the bumper starts to go out of view. And when I get around about this close, this is when I don't want to get much closer. I'll get as close as I possibly can and I'll go with about that. I don't feel comfortable getting any closer than that, although I'm sure if I got out of the car there'll probably still be about, I don't know, 15 to 30 centimetres left of space. Now I'm going to go backwards. Let's take a look at the car behind. At the moment we can see most of the car's face, the lights and the grille. Let's let this bike go past. And now I'm going to come back towards it. And as I get closer, the bumper's going to go out of view and the grille and the lights are going to start to go out of view. Let's get really close. So the lights are just about disappeared now and the bonnet is starting to go out of view. Let's get as close as we can and see. All oh, the reverse sensors are going off now. Let's see what it looks like when the reverse sensors go to continuous beep. Just there, barely see any of the bonnets. Turn those off. And I know when the reverse sensors on this car go to continuous beep, you still have about 30 centimeters left. And this is what that looks like. I'm not sure if it's 30 centimeters, about that I reckon. I can just about walk in between the two cars though. And this is how close I was on the way forwards. A little bit more space than I thought actually. And here's a reminder of what that looks like from inside the car. I don't actually recommend trying to get much closer than this because you can't judge exactly how long your car is. And how it looks will be different depending on the car you're driving or the car you're getting close to. If it's an estate car or an SUV or a van, it's always going to look different and your seating position is going to change how it looks as well. So you can't look at this video or the image in this video and go, oh, I'll just get as close as that because sometimes that'll be quite far and sometimes you may have already hit the car. You've got to go with your own judgment. My best advice is to only go as close as you feel comfortable. No more. If you're not sure, get out and have a look. That will help improve your judgment. I actually have a video on judging the length of your car. I'll link to it in the top right hand corner of your screen. I think it's very important that you understand that you can't judge the exact length of your car. Get someone else out to guide you. That's really helpful. Understanding that you don't know the length of your car makes you a safe driver. So when somebody is helping you get out, that just shows that you know your limits. You're not trying to be a superhero. Here's a video of me helping my friend park a small truck. Keep coming, Duncan. <laughs> it's the only way you're gonna get in. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Stop. Straighten your wheels, you're done. And yes, he was swearing, but I don't blame him. From his perspective, it certainly looked like he was gonna hit the car. But we've known each other for well over 20 years now, and I guess he does trust me, just. Parking sensors and cameras, they're great. They actually help you learn your judgment. They allow you to get really close to things, so then you can look out the window and see what it actually looks like. So they're a really good learning aid but they're no replacement for looking round for hazards. You need to look round to see bicycles, people and cars approaching you because the sensors won't go off until they're really close, in which case sometimes it can be too late. So use the sensors and cameras for accuracy, but still look round 
to make sure you know what's coming. On the driving test in the UK, you will have plenty of space to do your maneuvers. They don't expect you to get super close to other vehicles or have really good judgment of the length of your car. On your parallel park exercise, you'll have a very big space. Normally it won't even be between two cars. It'll be just a case of reversing behind a car that's in front of you and then stopping within two car lengths. And in car parks, they tend to use easier car parks, not ones where, well, like there's no room for you to move. If people around you have parked in a way that makes it challenging to leave, such as they have here, or there is just not enough space, you need to be aware of the turning circle of your car. The turning circle is how much space your car needs to drive in a complete circle when the steering is at maximum. Most cars need a circle that's around nine to 11 meters wide. As you can see here, it doesn't matter where I put the circle, the blue car will either hit the black or green car because there's simply not enough space. So if you try to move away from here with this much space, this will happen. However, if I move the car as far as I possibly can away from the green and black cars, this opens up more space. Enough for this car's turning circle. Oh, and by the way, this is why cars with a smaller turning circle are easier to park, such as a London cab, which has a turning circle of just eight and a half meters. And there you go, just made it. To get the car over to one side, you can pull forwards to do this. You can also change your position on the way back. If you do find yourself in this predicament though, turn the steering all the way in the opposite direction. And I do allow my pupils to dry steer. There's a video all about that in the top right hand corner of your screen. Don't shoot me. Then you can reverse back, making sure you don't hit anything around you. Then switch the steering again as much as you feel you need to make your way out. If you still feel you can't make it, simply repeat the process. Sometimes coming back in a straight line is better if there are cars very close either side of you. Going back further gives you even more room to worm your way out. To help you judge how close you are to a car beside you, use your mirror. As you can see, I have a plum colored car beside me. And as I steer around it, you'll be able to see how close I am to it in the mirror. I'll try and get really close here so you've got a good idea. And there you go, you can see the side of my car and the side of the plum colored car. And I don't wanna get much closer than that. So if I don't wanna get any closer, I simply take some steering off. And you can see I'm gonna make it without touching the car. So now I can continue. If you have limited space when reversing out, you cannot simply steer all the way and come back because you will likely hit a car either side of you. Bearing in mind that the front of the car will swing out, gradually add as much steering as you can without hitting the car. Reduce the steering if you are getting too close. Then when you have come back as far as you can, simply start the shuffle process of steering all the way in the opposite direction and driving forwards, then switching the steering again and going backwards. Keep doing it until there is enough room for you to get out. When reversing out of a parking space, it's important to remember that the front of your car will swing towards one of the cars either side of you. If you're gonna steer that way, the front of the car will swing the other way. I wanna go over there, so I'm gonna be very close to this black car. Let me show you, I'm gonna put it in reverse. Check to make sure it's safe for me to come back and come back. There's parking sensors on this car, it's picking up the fence in front of me. It'll also pick up this black car beside me. They're not too great on the side, this car. Sometimes they work better than others. And I'll get as close as I can to this car to get as much angle as I can. The more angle I have, the easier it is for me to get out. I will only go as close as I feel comfortable with. If I don't feel comfortable, I'll take some steering off or I'll even straighten up completely. If I straighten up, the car won't get any closer to that black car. But I think I can actually get a bit closer, so I'll add some more steering. And if it beeps at me, it's a sign like now that I'm getting a bit too close. So I might take some steering off. A good sign is when the light of the car appears this side of this A pillar. Then you know usually you're fully cleared so i can steer maximum now i'll have another look around to make sure it's safe and then i'll come out all the way 
Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. Check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. Collingwood are great if you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car because you can do so without affecting their policy. And at the moment, via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. They can also help you insure your own car. They're great for new drivers. Also check out confused.com to make sure you're getting the best deal. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from different insurers to see who's cheapest. Also, you can change the car on that quote as many times as you like if you want to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. You can check out Facebook and Instagram as well. I'm uploading theory questions to them. They're both Conquer Driving and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio. I'm gonna steer over there. So the front of my car is gonna go near this black car. So I've got to keep my eye on that. So what I'll do is I'll put it in reverse. And there's a learner car behind me doing a maneuver. So I can't actually continue with this piece. Cut.